reviewed basic basic trig there's a video of it if you are a little dodgy in your trig you can watch that okay remember from the ninth grade some of you from the tenth grade for others the trig that you know how to do has a 90 degree triangle then it's got two other acute angles less than 90 degrees there's that one which I'm gonna say is red theta, and there is that one, which I'm going to call blue theta. Red and blue theta can have these three functions performed upon them. For the blue theta, this is opposite because it's across. This is adjacent because it's beside, but not the hypotenuse. So for blue theta, O over A in blue letters. For red theta, it follows the same rules, except the O and the A switch places, depending on which angle you are seeking. For cosine, same thing. Duh, it's not O over A, you idiot. It's O over H. For cosine, it's A over H, blue A over blue H, and red A over H for cos, and tangent, tangent is O over A and O over A. Everybody remembers this, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah? Okay. Now, you also recognize this situation, right? This is a Cartesian plane. Or, the way we like to call it now, because we don't like naming things after the people that invented them anymore, we call it the coordinate grid. You guys have seen this many, many times. On this grid is the X and Ys. Those are the X's, those are the Y's. The grid is divided into four quadrants. Yes? This is quadrant one. In quadrant one, all X's and all Y's are positive. The quadrants go counterclockwise. This is quadrant two. In quadrant two, we have negative x's and positive y's. In quadrant three, we have negative x's and negative y's. And in quadrant four, we have positive x's and negative y's. None of this is news to any of you, is it? No, of course not. Now, I'm going to do some highlighting here because I didn't feel you needed to write all this down. An angle is in standard position. Please highlight that. That is a term I'm going to use all the time. If its vertex is at the origin, I'm going to put a red circle around that. That is the vertex. What is the vertex of an angle in regular English? The corner, right? Where the angle happens. Vertex is the proper term for it. And its initial ray lies on the positive x-axis. So I'm going to highlight initial ray, positive x-axis, which is right here. If the angle starts on the x-axis, it is in what we call standard position, okay? The other side is the terminal arm. Right now, we don't have an angle, right? We have a vertex and we have a ray. You need another line to make an angle. I'm going to make it out this way with the green line. That is my terminal arm. 
Everybody cool? All right. Now, the only thing about this that you need to be aware of when we're talking about trig is this situation. Counterclockwise rotation is a positive angle. So if I go that way, my angles, theta, are growing. So this angle here is greater than 90, yes? But it doesn't make it to 180. So this angle would be like 135 degrees. Everybody cool? Okay. If you go clockwise, though, you get negative angles. Theta is shrink. Well, shrinking's the wrong word for it. Theta is, uh, yeah, we'll call it decreasing. But even that's kind of not the best word for it, because here's what happens. If I put this terminal arm down here, and I'm going to make it green to keep it terminal, this theta here is a negative amount. Understand? So since I've gone a little bit more than halfway, let's call this negative 60. Is that cool with everyone? Does everybody understand why? Because I started here but went that way. So I'm going to call this theta negative 60. Right? But what is it as a positive angle? 300. Because if I go this way, 90, 180, 270, and that last 30, it's also 300 degrees. Is everybody cool with that? That's kind of the newest thing that you've got to wrap your head around in grade 11, that angles can go in a full circle. Up till now, you've only dealt with one quadrant, yes? Like if you look at this, this is the x-axis, that is the y-axis, and it's right in here. That's what you've dealt with up till now, yeah? Everybody's good? It's not complicated, you just got to get your mind around it. You go one way, you're adding. You go the other way, you're subtracting. But the terminal arm has two different ways to measure it. Yes? Okay. It's Monday morning. I'm going to take that as a yes. Now, please note the word sketch. You do not need to get out a protractor. Just sketch where these angles are. I will show you what I mean. 30 degrees. That is a third of the way up from 90. So I'm going to call that 30. Everybody with me? Do that for the next five. Because you shouldn't need me for it. If you are done, and I don't necessarily expect you to be, so don't feel stressed if you're still thinking about it, try these two. Just sketch them on your own page. Negative 75. Negative 95. I'm going to give you a third to really stress, well, not stress you, but see if you understand what's going on. 425 degrees. I 
And I'll wait a few more minutes. Well, not a few more minutes, but I'll wait a little bit longer for you to get these. Again, it is not a test. All right. Has everyone attempted at least the first six? Yes? Oh, God. Okay. So, 135, straight out that way, halfway, right? Because it's 45 degrees past 90. 245, it's going to be down here. 65 is going to be in there. 285 is going to be down there. 115 is going to be there. Was everybody good? Yeah? Everybody can do the six basic ones? You're going to get plenty of practice. Don't worry too much. Negative 75, that's going to be down here. Negative 95, that's going to be down here. Who got 425, do you think? What do you got to do? Go around more than, Go once. Around more than once. 360 plus 90 would be 450, yeah? I mean, yeah, 450, right? I don't need to go to 450. I only need 425. So it's going to be in here. Does everybody understand? Is everybody good? Okay. Now. Given an angle in standard position, it has a partner. Its partner is the reference angle. The reference angle is key, and I'm going to show you why in a moment, okay? First, we're going to define what it is. A reference angle is the angle between the terminal arm, which we just defined, the terminal arm, and the... Now, this is where it gets tricky, okay? And the X axis, okay? Only the X axis, okay? Everybody good? So I'm going to draw four angles here, all right? Once I put a line on here, that line is the terminal arm. Everybody understand? Because, of course, we know that the initial arm, which I will try to always draw in red, is along here. Yes? All right. So the terminal arm is the other side or the other part of an angle. So I'm going to put one right there. Okay? Now, this is theta. What is my reference angle? It is that. Does everybody understand? Because that's my terminal arm, the angle between the x-axis, and that is the same thing. So my reference angle, which I'm going to write with an R, is the same as my theta. Everybody cool? All right, now we're going to do one of these for each quadrant. This one is going to come out this way with my uh, terminal arm. Where is theta? On the right or the left of my terminal arm? On the right. This is theta over here because I start at zero and I go up. This is my reference angle because the terminal arm is closest to this x-axis. Is everybody good? Yes? Okay. This one, where is theta? 
above or below the x-axis? It's going to end up being both, right? There's theta. And where's my reference angle? This is the quadrant that messes everyone up. It's only this little part in here. Does everybody see that? Okay. And finally, down here, theta comes all the way around, and the reference angle lives in here. Is everybody cool? Okay. Now, here's where we're going to do some actual math. How would you find this reference angle if you knew theta? Kelvin. You've just done one extra step. Yeah. So this guy is 180 minus theta, right? What's this guy? You could do 270 minus theta, right? What's this guy? Three sixty minus theta, because we've gone past two seventy, right? Everybody cool? Yeah. Okay. So now I want you to draw each angle and identify the reference angle. Now, when I say identify the reference angle. I want a measurement. It shouldn't take very long. Go. Yes. Third one. This one's 270. Yep, yep. But uh, I'll come back to that. I know what you're saying. I understand what you're saying. And we're going to come back to it in a second. Okay? Because people said 270 minus theta. But I'm, I'm getting to that. After we do this, that will become clear. So there's 15. What's the reference angle? 15. 15 degrees is both. 120 is out here. There's the 120. What's the reference angle? 60. Excellent. 250. That's down here. Now, that's 250. What's the reference angle? 70. Now, here's the problem. A couple of things are happening here that seem to not jive with what we were just talking about, right? First was this thing. Lucas said 270 minus theta, which I let him say because I wanted this to be 270. I wanted you guys to recognize that, right? But if I do 270 minus theta, right, what do I get? Right? It's no good, okay? So this example here is 250, right? 
So if I do 270 minus 250, I get this 20, don't I? It's still helpful because this whole thing is 90 and I can take the 20 out, right? Everybody with me? But it doesn't, it's not the best way to find it. What you should be doing here is, now what is it? 180 plus, there you go. This is really theta minus 180. Is everybody cool with that? The 270, I let it slide because I wanted you guys to remember that these four are cardinal points, right? Northeast, southwest, whatever, however you want to think about it. You can still get it using your head. This way is just easier to find it. Everybody good? So this guy's reference was 70. Now somebody said minus 70 there. I thought I heard someone say. Okay? No. Because we're still going clockwise. Right? Cool? Okay. Okay. Um, and 350 is around here, right? So what's our reference angle? 10. Now, again, you want to say negative 10, right? Right? Because if we were counting on here, we went back that way, yes? But for our purposes, we are thinking of this just as an angle. Because it's making this triangle, yes? With a 10 degree angle there. Is everybody cool? Everyone's good? Okay. Now, you guys are smart kids. Woo! Put it all together here. We've been talking about angles. We've been talking about X's and Y's. So now put it all together in these, this graph. The terminal arm lies at 3, 2. Where is 3, 2? How do we read these? Out 3, up 2. Draw your line. There is 3, 2. Now, I need you guys to understand something. If this is taking us into tomorrow, into the next day, I'm going to get you guys to do some work right now. I'm going to shut up to make sure we're all okay. How far did I go this way on the x-axis? Three. How far did I go up? Two. Everybody cool? All right. So where is negative five, negative one? Quadrant three. Negative 5, negative 1. There's negative 5, negative 1. I draw the line. How far did I go this way? Negative 5. How far did I go that way? Negative 1. Everybody cool? Do that six more times.
Can everybody do that? Yeah? Easy peasy, right? Right? Okay. I'm going to stop recording there.